This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2055. What are the habits of wealthy people? By James Altucher of jamesaltucher.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. We're gonna get right to it and continue optimizing your life. What are the habits of wealthy people? By James Altucher of jamesaltucher.com. What are the habits of wealthy people? Someone asked this on Quora. I answered, I'm sorry to say that some of what I'm saying here, I've said before, some of you have heard it. That's okay. Again, I always say this is what worked for me. Some people might say, ugh, he said some of this before. Sometimes I'm not 100% original, but I always have to remind myself anyway. The best advice is 100% autobiography. So this is my story, and maybe someone can benefit, or maybe someone can't. I don't wanna be presumptuous. This is my answer. I took out a big life insurance policy and then debated killing myself. Then I lost my home. Then I lost my marriage. I drank a lot. I lost everything. I lost my self-esteem, or maybe I never had it to begin with. The IRS was after me. I lost money in a fund I started. I lost all the money in a business I started. I was afraid to return calls. I'd cross the street rather than talk to people, so I lost my friends. Those were the bad habits. I can't speak for others, but when I first made a lot of money, more than $10 million, I had many bad habits, and I lost 100% of my money. I went broke. I went into exile. Money doesn't make you better. It doesn't really increase your freedom. It doesn't make you more lovable. It just magnifies what is already inside of you. And past history is often future character, unfortunately for me. But then about the second or third time or fourth time, who keeps track? I lost money. I was on the floor and I was thinking, what the F? How can this keep happening to me? I keep making it. Why can't I keep it? So I made a list of the things I was doing on the way up and a list of the things I was doing on the way down. And it was simple. Don't buy any self-help guru program for riches. I just started doing every day the things I did on the way up. I'm about to tell you them, but let me tell another story. I used the ideas here to make a lot of money starting around 2009, the last time I went broke. The first was in 2000. But people kept saying to me, easy for you to say, you have money. So then, unfortunately, I got some proof. Bad things always happen no matter what. So a bad thing happened to me. I had a big investment in a public company that was worth millions. The largest shareholder in the company allegedly, I have to use that phrase, took a large amount of money from the company. Nobody knew. The company went to zero within weeks. I lost several million. I found out when, ironically, I was invited to hang out on the set of the TV show Billions. I highly recommend the show. I found out midday and had the rest of the day to spend time with the cast and crew and learn how a TV show was shot. Afterwards, when I told the writers what happened, they couldn't believe it. They said I was just as enthusiastic and curious in the afternoon as I was in the morning. Okay, but it was in my head. And I said, okay, Now is the time to practice what I always say I did or else I could be in some serious trouble. So I did. One year later, I can say the results have been startling. The money lost, pretty much made back. My relationships, better than ever. My health, better than ever. My creativity, doing well. My gratitude, I am grateful that my own advice has the best testimonial, once again from me. Here are the habits I do every day. Most important, I don't think about past or future. I just think, did I do these habits today? That's the only question I ask at the end of the day. I try to improve 1% each day on physical health, sleeping, eating well, exercise, which might just mean enough movement per day. It doesn't mean gym time. Emotional health, improving friendships, getting rid of the people who put me down or make me feel bad about myself, improving my own ability to hold on to my self-esteem 
rather than outsourcing it to others? It's hard enough for other people to deal with their own self-esteem, let alone mine. Love strangers, love my family, and don't judge myself too harshly. Mental health. Write down 10 ideas a day to exercise my idea muscle. The benefits of this are enormous. I just sent 10 ideas, for instance, to a $100 billion company that asked me for them. I build networks, make money, create opportunities, become creative, because I write down 10 ideas, most of them horrible, every day on a waiter's pad. Write, draw, and create in some way. Spiritual health. Simply be grateful every day. Find something difficult to be grateful for, like a breakup or like losing money. Note that spiritual health has nothing to do with religion, with meditation, with whatever. Only gratitude. Make things simple. One question a day. At the end of every day, ask, who did I help today? Financial habits. The previously mentioned are the most important habits. If I don't do those, I'll never succeed. I've seen this over and over, but there are financial habits. Never invest more than 2% of your net worth in any one thing, and that includes a down payment on a house or college for kids or private investments or stocks. When you invest in a private company, people are more important than the idea or industry. Invest with A, someone who has been a CEO before of a successful company, and B, with co-investors who are smarter than you, and C, in a demographic that is trending upwards. I keep the rest of my money in cash and I use it to invest in myself. I invest in myself with experience, education, and stories. I'll do anything for a good story. And books. This isn't quite a financial habit, so I split it out. Read a mix of nonfiction and fiction each day. It doesn't matter what you learn. Don't stress it, you'll absorb. Books are the way to get a lifetime worth of experiences in just a few days. And you can do that 100 times a year. So let me do the math. That's like living 100 years in one year or something like that. Some people say, I can't do that every day. I promise you that you can. I really promise this. It's not so hard. But I can't exercise. Just do 20 push ups and take a walk around the block. But I can't write down 10 ideas a day. It takes five minutes. I can't read a book. Just read three pages. Pull out a calendar. Check the box every day you do these. Make sure you never miss a day. Oh, and another important habit. Never, never blame someone else for your misfortune. That's similar to outsourcing your self-esteem to someone else, a boss, a relationship, etc. The only way someone invented cures was because someone got sick. Take responsibility for yourself so you know the future cures. That's how you live longer and happier in every way. One more thing I do every day, do at least one thing to get myself out of my comfort zone, a dare a day. Like writing a post telling you how much money I lost and how I'm proud of it. Being proud of how much money I've lost for others right when I'm trying to raise money for another project. That makes me scared and uncomfortable but I want my comfort zone to be as big as possible so I can live large, so I can help others, so I can be myself and proud of it. You just listened to the post titled, What are the Habits of Wealthy People? by James Altucher of jamesaltucher.com. I absolutely love this article. And as I was reading it, I found myself nodding and agreeing with all of this advice. We talk so much on this show about how to earn money, save money, manage money, invest money, etc. But the reality is, if you don't have good perspective and if your mental health is suffering, greed or fear will squander all of your efforts to build wealth. What was game-changing for me was shifting from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. Scarcity is rooted in fear and greed. This is what drives you to hoard money. But money is only as good as your clarity on how you'll use it and your comfort level of how much is enough. You get to a mental place of enoughness through an abundance mindset. 
And this is about so much more than just managing money and achieving the emotional benefits of financial security. An abundance mindset is also about trusting in yourself and having confidence that if you lost it all like James did, you're smart enough and talented enough to simply make more money. This will give you the confidence you need to take financial risks like investing in your own business, real estate, or the stock market. Investing is the only way to grow wealth. So an abundance mindset paired with some financial literacy is the fast track to financial freedom. And that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day and I'll see you on the Friday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.